Amid the reports of India leasing the Tu-160 for its Strategic Forces Command, experts have said that the USP-1 Lancer long-range bomber had carried out a flyby at the Aero India 2021, while being escorted by Tejas fighter jet of the Indian Air Force, and the B-1 Lancer remained parked at the Yale Hanka Air Force Station for a few more days even after the conclusion of the Aero India, which has now led to speculations that India has been talking to both Russia and US for its requirement to lease strategic bombers. The B-1 was originally designed for nuclear capabilities, but its external pylons designed for nuclear delivery were removed, to comply with the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty, which means that it will not cater to the requirement of India's Strategic Forces Command. Meanwhile, Russia has inducted two new Tu-160 strategic bombers that were built from unfinished airframes left from the 1980s, and has also started work to build at least 50 new airframes, and the first fully newly built Tu-160 will be delivered from 2025 onwards. Russia will have enough newly built modernized Tu-160 from 2030 onwards, that it can lease to India. After the release of a request for information in 2020 by the Royal Australian Air Force to procure lead-in fighter trainer to replace its fleet of 33 Hawk trainer aircraft, the Royal Australian Air Force has now begun the process to start technical screening of the fighter jets on offer. As per latest information, India had invited the Royal Australian Air Force team to visit India, and tour the facility of Hindustan Aeronautics to get a detailed briefing on the Hindustan lead-in fighter trainer program, and the Royal Australian Air Force has now responded positively to the invitation, and the team might visit India by the end of November. The ambassador of Spain to India has said, that the Spanish state-owned shipbuilding company Navantia is in the race for the supply of six next-generation submarines to the Indian Navy under the Project 75I, and its S-80 Plus is the only submarine in the world with a displacement of 3,000 ton and a proven AIP system, which closely matches the Indian Navy requirements among all shortlisted competitors. Germany is offering its Type 212 CD submarine, that has a displacement of 2,500 tons, but an additional plug for vertical launch system will place the submarine in the same league as Spanish S-80 Plus and Korean DSME 3000 in terms of surface displacement. In the next meeting of Defence Acquisition Council, the Modi government is slated to approve amendments in the defence acquisition procedure, that will allow Indian private sector to enter defence research and development through special purpose vehicles in collaboration with the defence public sector undertakings, for the development of major hardware platforms like drones, helicopters, aircraft and advanced submarines. The DRDO has been developing defence platforms over the decades, and the entry of private sector into the defence research and development will give India more options for the development and export of next-generation platforms. Despite a request from Sri Lankan authorities to defer the visit, China is continuing to sail its spy ship towards Sri Lanka's Hambanto to port. The spy ship is expected to reach Hambantota tomorrow at 9.30 am. Sri Lanka has leased its Hambantota port to China for 99 years, and the Chinese spy ship can track Indian ballistic missile tests from the east coast, thus gaining information on the performance of missiles and their exact range. A U.S. congressman has said that the U.S. President Joe Biden will expedite the Katsa waiver for India, because he has the political mileage and the backing of 300 members of the Congress. The U.S. House of Representatives had recently passed a legislative amendment that approves an India-specific waiver for Katsa sanctions for its purchase of the S-400 system from Russia.